Branding and designing your Etsy shop. Branding is a super essential part to any online business, whether you're on Etsy, whether you're on Amazon, whether you're on Shopify, it's super, super important that you create a brand vibe and a brand culture that is a fit for your customer avatar, that your branding is speaking to your ideal dream customer. People are understanding and connecting with your branding immediately. That's what we're gonna be covering in this video. So let's get into it. guys, my name is Hannah Gardner. If you're new to the channel, I talk about mainly building brands on Shopify and Etsy, but a lot of other entrepreneurship stuff as well. I have made it my mission to share back every single thing that I've learned along the way on this channel. The fundamentals of branding an Etsy shop. On Etsy specifically, you have your logo, you have a banner, an Etsy banner, you have your profile image, you have your brand name, you have an about me section on your Etsy storefront page. You also have packaging. So branding your packaging of your products is super essential. You also have packaging inserts. So possibly an insert, a product insert that you put inside of your packaging when you ship your items to your customer. Then you also have other things like social media, like Pinterest and Instagram and TikTok and Facebook and there's just too many these days. And I don't always recommend people to just go straight into promoting your shop on social media. This is something that I kind of say is like your stage two of your Etsy shop once you already have you know, your Etsy ads maxed out on daily ad spend. The one exception to that I will say is if you are the entrepreneur that is already heavy on social media, meaning you're already an influencer on TikTok or you're already you know, really big on Instagram, if you are that type of Etsy merchant, then I would say social media shouldn't be your second thing. You should be focusing on, you know, continuing to make content because if you've ever tried to make content for an e-commerce brand, you know that it's super time consuming. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on in the video, but let's just hop into some of the beginning things here that comes with branding on your Etsy shop. So the first thing obviously is your brand name. And when it comes to choosing your brand name, and all of these marketing assets as a whole, it, what you want to keep in mind is who is your customer avatar? Who are you speaking to, right? The person that is your perfect ideal dream customer should see these impressions of your banner and your brand name and your color scheme and they should get it immediately. An ideal customer for you should have that immediate connection with your branding. First off, when it comes to picking your brand name, a couple of tips here is, you know, look at what your competitors are doing. You know, competitor research is huge. I'm not saying to copy them, but for instance, people that are in the jewelry niche, sometimes it's very fitting in, you know, custom, you know, handmade jewelry where a lot of designers just have their name as their title. Sometimes they actually have the word jewelry in their title. And that makes sense. Both of those make sense where it, maybe your title has, you know, a trendy word in it that has nothing to do with jewelry, but it makes sense in the overall brand vibe, where if you're somebody selling stickers in your custom sticker store, or you're a custom you know, photo printing shop, it doesn't really make sense to just have a shop brand name that is your name. You can do that. It isn't really a product fit where in that case I would suggest, you know, see what the market's already doing and what the top shops are doing. Are they using brand names like you know, designer names, probably not. They're probably using something like Love Prints or Printing 101 Company or something like that where it has to do with that actual niche. So really analyzing the marketplace and getting inspired by what the marketplace is showing you and who's winning in the marketplaces for those certain niches is really gonna help you. Next thing we're gonna talk about is your shop banner. Now, when it comes to actually designing physical assets, for your business. What you need to keep in mind is a brand color scheme. One designer explained this really, really nicely to me. Basically, it's very similar in the home decor space. If you're a famous interior designer, one of the first things that you do is you go to Home Depot or you go to the paint store and you start picking out all the colors that you like. And when you lay all those colors together, those colors should make sense and should make up you know, these colors that are going to exist within maybe even your products and all of your product photography, maybe your video, maybe 
you know, your Instagram account. Like when you go to really, really popular Instagram accounts, when you look at their feed, all of the photos for some reason just make sense and flow together. And a big reason that is that way is because their color palette is pretty consistent throughout their feed. Back to the interior design example, you know, when an interior designer does that and they're picking out a palette, Essentially, one, the palette should make sense, so the colors that you're choosing should look good together. But then two, when you actually go and walk into that house, or in this case, walk into your business, when people are navigating through all your different product pages, or you know your various banners that you have, or even your packaging, all those color accents should exist so it flows nicely together. And that's what really makes it a really good Instagram feed or a shop feed better than, say, a competitor that doesn't have that. So with your shop banner, one of the tools that I actually want to share with you that is super essential. I've built every single brand with this tool. It's called Canva. Canva is like a Photoshop for beginners. They literally have thousands of templates. Like if I come in here right now and literally type in Etsy banner, it's going to spit back to me like dozens and dozens of examples of banners that I can choose from. Not really cool about this is if I come in here and just click on one of these banners, what it's going to do is it's going to give me the template of the banner. So all I have to do in here is come in here and change, you know, the title, love prints, you know, if that was my shop name and stuff like that. But not only is it going to give me, you know, inspiration for fonts and pairing fonts because pairing fonts is absolutely huge, but it's also going to give me colors. We can come down here and we can add a different page if we want. And Canva is optimized to show you the most trending design. Canva is literally what I use not only for logos, what I use for my banners, I use it for social media, I use this for my Shopify accounts, for all of my emails that I send out, for all my email marketing. When you first start doing branding and branding design for the first time, I don't want you to be super hard on yourself. When you're first starting out, it is easy to tell an amateur design from a professional design, but Canva does make it really simple for you to do this. But even if you, with Canva, you're like, I'm still hopeless, I don't like doing this. My other recommendation is to come in here and actually hire somebody on Fiverr.com. Fiverr is where you can hire a lot of graphic designers. So I can type in Etsy banner up here and you know, it's gonna give you some people here that can do some design for you. And a lot of them will actually do a complete package of branding design for you for pretty cheap, for less than a couple hundred bucks to have someone completely brand out your store for you. And sometimes you need to do that at the beginning, especially if you're new at graphic design because it kind of gives you an inspiration or a different perspective of like, oh, I wouldn't have put those fonts together or I put those colors together. And it helps you move forward or kickstart, you know, your store as a whole. Another really good thing to look at is using Pinterest. Pinterest is very similar to the sense where it's going to optimize what is most trending in their feed. So if you go into Pinterest and type in branding inspiration or Etsy shop branding inspiration, it's going to end up hiring a designer instead to do it for you. You can start creating a mood board and then outsource that work to an actual professional designer and you know they can go off your Pinterest mood board to then create the design that you like. The next thing that I want to talk about is photography. Photography, again, should make sense with your overall brand vibe. So here's an example. Again, we have a really cute shop banner here. We have a really nice logo, which by the way, I didn't even mention logos. If I come in here and type in Etsy logo, it's going to do the same thing and it's going to give you a bunch of templates of logos. And again, it's just literally coming in here and dragging and dropping and changing the font or changing the text of what you want it to say. So Canva is a dream. But let's go back to our example here when it comes to product photography. So as I mentioned before, you're seeing a reoccurrence of the colors, the overall colors to you know finish off that brand vibe. So you know we have some terracotta here, we're seeing some deep browns, terracotta neutral colors here, and overall all the colors and the branding flows together. Product photography is so important. I cannot emphasize how important product photography is. You could literally be curing cancer, but if your product photography looks worse than your competition, your competition is going to outsell you every single time. I taught myself photography and and I've always done all my product photography on a DSLR. Your niche and your competition is killing it with their marketing and their product photography. You need to come into the space 
also killing it with your product photography. So a couple of notes here, again, the overall brand vibe is super congruent, a little bit off topic, but I just want to cover why this store probably does really, really well. It's because of the bundled image photography, like multiple products. And when you click on the product that's showing 10 little bonnets here, bibs, when you click on it, you don't actually get 10 of them. You're only getting the color that you want. But what this does then is when you see it in the product feed, they're seeing 10 items for this price. Even though when you actually click on it, you're not actually getting 10 items but there's always that perception of more for less, even if when they click on the item, you, know, you don't actually get everything in the photo, but that's a really big trick that you should be doing or testing out for your own products is bundling items if you can, or showing bundled items in photography. Again, the only recommendation I would say to this store for their branding and photography is that you know they're killing it with the bundled items. Obviously, all their best sellers are bundled. They don't have any product photography showing it on an actual baby model, which is something that I would suggest that they actually test out. I don't want to go too into the rabbit hole of strategic marketing versus the creative marketing since this video is more about creative marketing. People aren't spending that much time investigating a listing of the product photography isn't good. So make sure it's an up close image and showing all the key elements of that product the best you can for that first main image. Now we're going to talk about your profile image and your about section. So yes, this is all a part of branding. And what I'm talking about here is your about image right here. So you can see we have this little graphic here for the image. And then when we scroll down here, we have an about section. Now, a couple of recommendations of what I would say here is you have the option to turn this into a video. And I recommend that your about section is an actual video of you, the business owners talking. People resonate with real people. And especially on Etsy, a lot of people are shopping on Etsy because they want to support small handmade business owners. So that just helps that connection to your brand and who they're actually spending their money with that much more when they see a face behind the brand. So I almost recommend this be a video. And then in the copywriting below, it's just a text. It, the copy is basically just reiterating what you're saying in the video. Guys, people resonate with real people. Even if you're just taking a video on your iPhone and putting it there, I still think that serves a better purpose than a photo. Um, and basically in that video, I would be answering questions like who you are, what your mission statement was for the, the store that you're building. So what is your why? Why do you exist? What is the bigger reason that you wanted to build this store? Value proposition. So why your products are better than your competitors? Are you, is the quality better? Are you beating people on price? Does it have better features than others? Why is your product better than your competition? So all of that stuff should be included in your about section. Again, okay, not that many people read your about section, but I, you know, I had people that would watch my video and message me on Etsy. Oh my gosh, I watched your about video and I, it just resonated with me so much. And all of those little moments of truth, it can't hurt you. It can only help increase your sales. So again, we're setting up this for the Super Bowl, not the high school game, you might as well set it up the best you can. Another little thing that I want to mention here is when you come into the graphic or the image for you for your actual profile image, they have a graphic there instead of an image of themselves, which I almost recommend that you should actually put an image if it's you and your partner, if it's just you and yourself, an image of your face, because again, people resonate with real people. One thing that I do want to mention for men, people trust women more on the internet. Like there's data that backs this. Like I'm not just like making this up. If you're a single male that owns an Etsy shop. I would almost recommend not putting your image just as a male by himself as your profile picture, especially if you're selling goods in a girl dominated niche, people just trust women more. I don't know why recommend in that case to at least change the image. Maybe it's you and your cat or you and your dog or something like that. It just helps that perception of trust that I'm spending money with somebody that seems more warm and cuddly. I don't know. I don't know why. We're going to talk about packaging and product inserts. Packaging is huge when it comes to your Etsy shop. It's such a massive impression and opportunity to leave a massive impression on your customers. So packaging, whether you're using mailers or boxes or whatever the case may be, some places to start with this is also Pinterest. So looking at packaging inspiration, some places that you can actually go and buy stuff. I honestly, I go on Alibaba and I type in packaging. I try to find eco-friendly packaging. The reason I go to Alibaba is because there is like 
endless customization designs of your packaging. So basically whatever you want, there will be a manufacturer that will be able to make it for you if you can create a mock-up or show them an inspiration photo of what exactly you want, with what materials you want, somebody on Alibaba will be able to make it for you. Another thing with Alibaba, I don't always go with the first manufacturer. I get many quotes from different manufacturers. Different manufacturers are gonna give you a bunch of different quotes, and so you wanna be able to say, hey, this manufacturer offered me a landed cost, meaning including customization, including the product, and including air freight shipping or sea freight shipping. What is that cost? And air freight versus sea freight is a completely different price. Sea freight shipping is super, 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 super cheap compared to air freight shipping. So you wanna make sure you're getting quotes for all of those things. And when it comes to your product insert, which is putting a product insert inside of your packaging, again, I come back into Canva and I can even come in here and type in Etsy thank you card. And they're gonna give me a bunch of different thank you card examples here. You know, a card that you could essentially print out and put inside of your packaging. Again, that insert in your, you know, your packaging, all of that branding, colors, everything should be congruent and make sense. And when it comes to printing these cards, I use a local printer. I pay about, for a four by six card, I pay about 22 cents per card. And finally, when it comes to branding on your social media, which we kind of talked about before, the goal with your social media is to really hone into your customer avatar and you know build feeds where it's congruent and makes sense and it's aesthetic to the person that you're speaking to. And not only aesthetic in you know, what it looks like as far as the photos and the colors, but also the copywriting. So the actual text that you're using and the language that you're using, right? If you're speaking to a tech person, there's a certain type of professionalism and you know, tech <laughs> type language versus if you're buying jewelry and it's more playful, you know, there's different language and different jargon that different niches use. So researching and understanding who that product customer avatar is. Guys, I have a lot more videos like this one that go way in depth on opt store optimization and stuff like that. So I recommend that you actually go check out those videos. Keep learning and keep growing. Hopefully you got some value out of this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and comment any of your questions or concerns in the comment section. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.